tell you. Good evening and morning and second breakfast to you. My name is Dig That and I want to learn you something. Star Citizenship UI takes a little getting used to, so let's break it down to easy peasy bits. We're going to jump right into it, so you know the drill. Sub up, like up, and ring up like a boss. Depending on what ship you're in, you have between 2 and 511 little screens around you. These multifunction displays, or MFDs for short, give you information about your ship and control over its systems. From requesting docking permission to managing heat, it's all right here. Instead of squinting at the information displayed on each one, you can hold down the F key, look toward the desired display, and either zoom in and out with the mouse scroll wheel, or middle click to zoom right in. You can decide which display is showing what info by clicking the menu button in the upper left and selecting whichever system you like to access. Let's start with the comm system. Here's where you see all your friends, any nearby players, landing services for places you can dock at, and your distance to them. To contact them, use the comms icon. If you're outside of a port, contacting them will assign a landing pad or a hangar to you. If you're already docked, contacting them will open the hangar door so you can leave. The self-status is pretty self-explanatory. It's a visualized overview of damage and shields. Each of these buttons gives you a different angle on your ship, and you can also read your EM signature and IR signature. If you take damage, here's where you'll see it, and if your shields take damage, you'll see them shrink until they disappear. I just powered down the shields so they're all going down equally, but in combat, they'll shrink independently as they take damage. As they regenerate, you'll see them grow. It's a grower, not a shower. Actually, it's both. The target category will show this same info for ships that you have locked, as well as give you the option to hail them. Most of the time, this info is also displayed in the upper left and right corners of your screen, so you might not use this often, but it's there when you need it. Moving on to Pow This is where you'll allocate your power plant's resources into your systems and subsystems. The big bar across shows how much power is available to your ship. By default, it's set to max power. It doesn't mean it's using all the juice as it comes in, but it's there if the ship needs it. For example, if your shields need to recharge or you're firing weapons, which are both a drain on power. You can lower the available power by clicking or dragging left or right along the bar. But why would a gangster like yourself want to lower the power, you ask? Well, lowering the power output can reduce your signature so that you're harder to detect. The lower the power, the closer other ships need to be to detect you. If you take your power down to behind the line that says stealth, then you'll make yourself just about as undetectable as you can. It doesn't make you invisible by any means. Any ship close enough can detect you. And in this behemoth, you don't exactly have to be on top of it to detect it. Stealth gameplay isn't fully realized at this point, so we'll save that for another video, but this is also where you can view your heat, IR, and EM signatures on the right side. Masking these signatures is useful for preventing lock-ons from various missile types that lock on to these specific signatures. The diamond on the left allocates power to weapons, shields, and thrusters. The default in the middle keeps each system balanced with equal power. Allocating more power to one doesn't mean it gets extra power. It means that system has priority and will receive power more quickly than the other systems. If your shields are going down to critical levels, then keeping them up and getting out of harm's way is the priority, so sending power to shields and engines is your best move. As long as you leave at least a little bit of power to the weapons, they'll recharge just a lot slower. If you switch to the item submenu, you see all the individual components that require power. For whatever reason, your main components are labeled by their brand rather than what they actually are, and if you don't have them memorized, you'll need to go to your Moby Glass to see what they are. So if you have no clue what Ginzels are, you go to your Moby Glass, the Vehicle Loadout Manager, and look for that name. In this case, Ginzels are the power plants. Would be nice if it said Ginzel Power Plant in the MFD, but this is what we have for the Mo. The arrows below each component are used to change priority levels for each one, so if you want to prioritize sending power to your turret gunner's M6A cannon over the pilot-controlled M3A cannon, you hit the up arrow on the M6A or down on the M3A. If you start moving stuff around and forget what was where, you just hit the priority reset button. The overclock button will increase the output of components. Overclocking your guns will change it from firing at a normal rate to firing at an increased rate. You'll fire faster, but your guns will also overheat faster. 
So you gotta make sure that you're accurate with it if you're gonna use it. Coolers used to be able to be overclocked to compensate, but that function has been removed, at least for the time being. So purchasing a higher performance cooler is your ticket to keeping your components from overheating. The bars to the right are a manual way to overclock and underclock components. Some of their functionality is being removed for the moment. The number next to the hearts represent the health or functional capacity of the components. 100 is max and it goes down as it takes damage. Let's look at your weapons menu. To the right is where you can switch each weapon on and off. Next to that is the fire group that the weapons are on. Zero is your main fire button. One is for your secondary fire button. In the middle are adjustable power slider bars again, same as the ones in the previous menus. On the right are the amount of guns on each fire group. At the bottom are the amount of missiles you have available. In the gun subcategory, you can turn your individual guns on and off. So if one is destroyed and you want to remove the drain on your power plant, just turn it off. Your fire groups are next to it as before, but in this menu, you can adjust them. If you want everything to fire on your main trigger, then you set them all to zero. The ammo type is next, but it doesn't look like all the icons are in since this ship actually has both ballistic and energy weapons. The amount of ammo is next. Energy weapons always say zero since they're infinite. Ballistic weapons will decrease as you fire them. Current power use is next. This will increase when you're using the weapons or go to zero if you turn them off. The health status is next to that and next to that is component degradation. The more you use the weapons, the more wear and tear they'll have. Zero is optimal and as they degrade, this number will rise. You can continue to repair them at ports, but as they degrade more, repairing them is more like patching them and you may get misfires or other anomalies. At some point, you just need to replace them. The last number is the temperature of the weapons, which rises as you use them. The missile subcategory shows you the priority on the left, followed by the name, followed by the size, and then the type of missile. This is important since the type refers to its guidance system. There's three missile types, infrared, electromagnetic, and cross-section. Infrared or IR missiles look for heat signatures, so ships spamming energy weapons and equipped with components that release a lot of heat will make for an easy lock-on with these. EM missiles search for electromagnetic emissions, so power management is needed for evasion. Cross-section missiles take the longest to lock because they're identifying the ship's appearance for targeting and they can't be evaded with systems management. On to shields. You got your usual power slider bar and underneath is the minimum power required to run them. This requirement goes up if your shields are charging or all the way down if you've turned the shields off. Below that are your shield quadrants. By default, they're balanced at 100 on each side. These values can be changed with the keys on your keyboard numpad. Eight increases forward shields, two increases rear, four increases port shields, and six increases starboard. As you increase one, the others decrease. You can also increase the top and bottom shields with nine and seven, nine being the top and seven the bottom, but there's no visual representation for this. The five key brings the shields back into balance. To increase the rate of recharge for your shields, you can allocate power to them via the power menu. The standby button will halt power flow to them without cutting your shields off. Whatever you have in the shield banks at the time is all you get until you turn off standby. Power obviously completely cuts them off, which means they'll have to charge up from zero when you turn it back on. The item submenu also lets you turn them off and view the name, power use, health, degradation, and heat output. As you can see, the shield components are already degrading since it's at one instead of zero. The road to planned obsolescence. Finally, you've got the heat menu. This is in place to let you monitor your emissions. Firing weapons or using your thrusters causes the levels to go up. In the firefight, this is the quickest place to lower your signatures and prevent a missile lock. You or your co-pilot can suppress the signatures from weapons, shields, overall power, and thrusters. This will lower your ship's performance, so best to be used only as needed. At the top, you can click suppress overall to lower the signature from all the systems at once. The item submenu works the same way as it does on the power submenu. So, now you at least got an idea of what the menus are for and it doesn't look like the cockpit of a DC-10 anymore. It's a lot to keep track of by yourself, but that's what co-pilots are for. A voice attack is also helpful in carrying the load. Power to shields. Right shields, 50%. 
balance power. But the real value of multi-crew ships is in having folks who know what they're doing run the show on systems management. And now, that can be you. Shout out to producer extraordinaire, Ike the Subliminal Show Nuff. Good looking out, big homie. You are appreciated, man. Shout out to all the fans supporting the Dig That and Space Sam Arts. Salute to Commander Blackout, Diedrix, The Mother, Busser Boy, Anthony Jackson, Guillotine Girl, SM, Generalissimo, Commander Dr. Digital, Space Pirate McMorgan, and Zaylin Maru. Much appreciated, fam. My name is Dig That, and that's my time. Fly Dirty Citizens. <laughs>